And we back here with another video. The last video I was about to put out, it didn't come out. The sound didn't come out right, bro. I was so freaking mad, bro. Cause it was another. It was a young down. It was a young down the sauce guy video, and it didn't come out right, bro. Ooh, I don't even think I should even release that. Cause y'all can't hear Jack squat. So we about to do this right. Let's get it. Shout out to my boy. So there was this like Dominican nigga in the class, baseball player. And this nigga was always trying to talk to my girl, right? Always had some dumb, goofy <laughs> to say, which shouldn't be a problem. But I was a jealous man. So of course I would start to get petty. It'd be like that. Woo woo. Here we go. The second time I lost my girlfriend was definitely worse than the first. Because the first time she broke up with me was because I liked her too much. You know, came on a little strong, which is normal when you're talking about your first real girlfriend. I mean, you think the girl is perfect, right? For a lot of dudes, that's like the first girl that's gonna let you touch her butt. Okay, I didn't mean to talk that. Whenever you want, dudes. But facts! He's always speaking these facts, G. Y'all gotta listen to this man. He's speaking facts. That's like the first girl that's gonna let you touch her butt whenever you want. That's so nice. So it's easy to overdo the whole lovey dovey, baby, I miss you shit. The second time she broke up with me, though, was because I became controlling and displayed far too much insecurity in the form of irrational jealousy. That one is a little harder to come back from because in the first instance, you know, you just like her too much. And when she breaks up with you, she might even feel bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You just like her What did it say? And when she breaks up with you, because in the first- Yo, <laughs> First instance, you know, you just like her too much. And when she breaks up with you, she might even feel bad. Oh my God, he's so nice. I just feel like, I feel like he likes me way more than I like him. You know, he's such a nice guy though. I'm terrible. <laughs> the second instance though, she's not gonna feel bad about it, you know? Because she's starting to resent you. Your insecurity makes you look weak. No girl wants a weak man. So how exactly was I being a control? Your boy not weak though. Y'all know that. Not all in that. I'm a real one out here. I'm insecure. Tell the people. Little boy. Three main things come to mind. One, she had a couple guy friends that she had been friends with since middle school. And as far as I can remember, she never crossed any lines and they didn't seem to be crossing any lines with her but they texted her pretty often. And that bothered me a lot. Now, here's the truth. That That's fire. Me. Most girls are gonna have guy friends, whether it be just a dude at work or school that she's friendly with. Maybe it's an old childhood friend. Maybe it's a guy from church or something like that. You know, that's normal. So as long as you remain confident and secure, I found these dudes are never a threat. And think about it, we all got that one homie that is friends with a bunch of girls, but never smashes any of them. His story is always, oh, he values the friendship or some bullshit like that, you know? Those are the kind of dudes that are friends with your girl. They only become a threat if you start acting threatened. So that's where I went wrong. I had no reason to be threatened, but I still let it bother me that she was so friendly with them. So, I forbade <laughs> her from texting. Not the face, bro. Texting them. We had this huge yeah. argument about it. I threatened to leave her, which is always a hollow threat. If you're gonna leave, then just leave. Leave. Eventually, she agreed, but I later found out that she was just deleting her text to them before we hung out because that's what people do when you try to control them. They find a way around it. If anything, all I did was make her want to text them more because now she was being sneaky. It became a game. 
and games are fun. Senior year of high school, my girl and I had PE class at the same time, but she was in general PE and I was in weightlifting. And just so we could spend a little more time together, she requested that she got taken out of her PE class and get put in my weightlifting class. And at first it was dope. That's right? a good girl. Okay, I don't know about that. But, I mean, most of the time, hey, that's actually pretty nice. And we had a lot of fun working out together, but this class was like 90% dudes. And if you've ever been in a room filled with guys, and then you put like two girls in that room, they instantly become the center of attention. So of course, my girl now becomes a target. Now, I was used to catching guys looking at my girl. If anything, it was a compliment. So that, that didn't bother me too much. But there's always that one nigga that, that one. just wants to take it a little too far, right? So there was this like Dominican nigga in the class, baseball player, and this nigga was always trying to talk to my girl, right? Always had some dumb, goofy shit to say, which shouldn't be a problem, but I was a jealous man. So, of course, I would start to get petty. Whenever she started talking to this nigga, I would go and find like one of the two other girls in the class and start talking to one of them. That, or I just start pretending like my girl didn't exist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like she wasn't in the room yo, anymore and yo. eventually she noticed and was like for that. are you good so i'm like <laughs> are you good so then she, are you good my g she's like what do you mean so i'm like why the fuck is you all over this nigga every time i turn around you having a, a tea party in the goddamn squat rack why are you even talking to me go talk to him that's your nigga right <laughs> <laughs> and oh, oh my god, he didn't do that bad. Nah, he could have. He could have. It's to keep it peace. my sweet little girlfriend stop, stop talking to this nigga completely. Again, all I've accomplished is making another dude seem like a threat. But the final straw was her ex. In the first two cases, I genuinely wasn't threatened by these dudes. I couldn't see my girl cheating on me with these dudes right i was just being possessive right and irrationally jealous but when it came to her ex i saw this nigga's as a threat for one he was older and in college right he had a car he was also a basketball player and i had moved to america my junior year so i never met him in person but all the stories i heard was that he was pretty much a cool dude and if i remember correctly he broke up with my girl not the other way around, which makes a difference. And ever so often, for whatever reason, he would text my girlfriend. So I hated this nigga with my whole heart. Don't even really know what this dude looks like to this day. But I wanted nothing more than for my girl to block him on everything, throw away every gift, every picture, any trace of this nigga, burn it, scorch the earth, Kill this nigga, please, God, God, please kill this nigga. <laughs> I had so much to learn. That behavior rotted away at our relationship, and everything else on top of that was just salt in the wound. Eventually it became too much, and she broke up with me. Never really gave me a reason, just, she was just emotionally checked out. I tried to save it, I tried to reason with her, negotiate her love. Love, loyalty, trust, and desire can neither be negotiated or bought. It must be given freely of one's own free will. If it's acquired any other way, it's fake. I even had one of our mutual friends try to mediate the conversation in hopes that he would help me talk some sense into her, which only made me look stupid, without a doubt. So we broke up, called it quits, and for a moment, it looked like we were done for good. But then someone came into my Sad life, an hours, unexpected bro. mentor. Sad this guy hours. was the last this guy. Meant it that's that, that's that like real hurt right there. That's that real pain, bro. That's that real pain. Y'all know nothing about that. We were done for good. Y'all young don't know nothing But then about someone that. came into my life. An unexpected mentor. This guy was the last guy I would ever expect to help me get my girl back. He was also a senior, so maybe at most a year older than me, but he was wise beyond his years. And that's because 
He was a gangbanger from Opelaka, Florida. So. <laughs> I know all y'all thought that he was going to be black, but I know it. I know it. Yo. He be throwing the craziest twist, bro. Yeah. His name was David. And I'll tell you how he helped me get my girl back in the next episode. Stay tuned. Y'all want to do 201? 201? Turn on notifications. We got to go. I got you. Because this is too funny, bro. I got y'all. And it's gonna be quick. I promise you that. Good looks, y'all. Good looks. Whatever. But that actually sounds. As a result, as a, as a, as a result, we were warned that anybody who caught a suspension even once for any reason at all, was not going to be allowed to walk the stage during graduation. And I know Pablo Escobar got shot or whatever, but that actually sounds way better than having to tell your Jamaican mother that you can't participate in graduation. I mean, death by firing squad sounds way more pleasant if you ask me. And he ain't wrong. Any black <gasps> mother at all will beat that till you can't walk no more. When you tell her that, your boy ain't gonna be the other side of the street. The fact that this man. Oh, wait, hold on. Is he crediting for more? Video. On to my ten. Hold on. I actually kind of want to look at this. Hold on, y'all. And then the um, nigga. Whatever that you can't listen if you ask me. My bad, y'all. I gotta look at this. He actually credited the. <sighs> he actually crediting the um uh, platform that I use now. Uh, or I've been using for a while. Um, what the fuck is wrong with this? Thing? Yo, <sighs> you good? I'm bored. <laughs> So then go do some, nigga, the fuck? You, are you 12 now or something? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I thought you said you were going to learn me beats. You, you bought the keyboard. What happened to that? Yeah, but it's hard, man. And it's expensive. All the software you got to buy is expensive. Packs. And then the, the beat packs and the sounds. I ain't got to kind of bread, nigga. Hmm. You ever think about starting a YouTube channel? I mean... Yeah, but isn't all that video editing shit expensive and complicated? Bro, you ain't hear about Filmora 9? It's free to try, and if you like it, it's only like three, four dollars a month. Bro, oh, I think that's the beat thing. I think that's the heart monitor thing that, he's that he was talking about, bro. In his other video, where he said he had to get uh, the heart thing because this girl almost, well, that box, bro. It was deadly. In his own words, the box was deadly. So I think that was the heart monitor or the heart uh, thing where it like repumps your heart. Where uh, if you like, if any problems happen, like if it skips a beat too much or something like that, or s too slow or something like that, it'll restart it. It'll, um, yeah, like that. Give it an extra, mm. like an extra pump, man. Right? Pump it back into flow, yeah. Into rhythm. One. All the other video apps cost like twenty dollars, but this shit, this shit is damn near free, nigga. That's crazy, damn. bro. Is it any good, bro? That's why I used to edit this whole video. Only took like ten minutes to figure out. All right. the other video apps about Filmora Nine, it's free yeah. to try, and if oh, you yeah. like, it's only like three, four dollars a month. All the other video apps cost like twenty dollars, but this shit, this shit is damn near free, nigga. Damn. Is it any good, bro? That's why I used to edit this whole video. Only took like ten minutes to figure out. All right, come. Let me show you. If you're new to video editing, Filmora 9 is the best software for you. Do everything from split screens to recording your screen, editing your clips using green screens, and advanced color correction. The color correction, that's my favorite part. They got a ton of preset effects, and you can go to their online stock library, Filmstocks, to download high quality audio, images, footage, and after effects. Use my download link in the description and try it free today. Yeah, I got a double back and shot, you really with it.
So I almost didn't graduate high school in Jamaica because the dean of discipline of my school caught me selling candy during morning devotion. Now, I know most of you watching live in America, so morning devotion, dean of discipline, these might be unfamiliar terms to you. Now, for the uninitiated, grew up in Jamaica, graduated Jamaican high school at 16, moved to America, did junior and senior year in Florida, and then graduated American high school. But this, this story is in the Jamaican high school, so, so stick with me here. There are a lot of differences between high school in Jamaica and high school in America. Public high school in Jamaica, everybody wears uniform. In America, you pretty much wear whatever you want. Jamaican public school, we start the day off with morning devotion, where we sing praises, clasp our hands, close our eyes, and pray to the good Lord Jesus Christ. In American high school, you make TikToks with your buddies or whatever the fuck you niggas are doing in 2020. Oh, that's right. Y'all niggas in Zoom class. <laughs> that's right. In American public school, yes, all throughout yeah. the campus, you have these large magical boxes where for just a little bit of pocket change, you can get just about any snack or mm. drink that your little heart desires. In Jamaica, it's a little different. When I was going to school, we didn't have vending machines on the campus. Instead, we have street vendors, people with carts that they fill with snacks and drinks and all kinds of shit, and they push it down the street, and that's, that's where you go when you want to buy a snack. And in a lot of ways, it's better than a vending machine because you can't negotiate with a vending machine. If it costs a dollar twenty-five for the Doritos, it costs a dollar twenty-five, Mikey. You better have a dollar twenty-five. With the street vendors, Shit, they'll take a dollar fifteen. Anyway, what this means is that the only time you can get any food, snacks, candy, drinks during school in Jamaica was during your 45 minute lunch period. Because street vendors pushing their carts down high school hallways during class time would be ridiculous. Which means if you did Wait, hold on. during your 45 minute 15. Anyway, what this means is that the only time you can get any food, snacks, candy, drinks during school in Jamaica was during your 45 minute lunch period. Because street vendors pushing their carts down high school hallways during class time would be ridiculous. Which no, 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 okay, let me, let me um, stop him on that. Um, so look how we do it in, in, on US, in our school at least, how it was. Um, people actually did, like the teachers actually get, did go down like the halls and some classes, mostly at the end of the day or lunch periods with carts filled with candy, popcorn, sometimes drinks and snack and other snacks. It was crazy. It was it was good. And I appreciate them for that because that was privilege, bro. Which means if you didn't bring snacks to school or you we didn't had a lot of restrictions and stock up during lunchtime, during the rest of school, you pretty much have no way to get any food especially snacks and especially candy this created what i like to call a snack vacuum where other kids saw an oppressive school rule that prevented you from getting candy during class time i saw a business opportunity and to be fair i didn't come up with the idea i saw this other kid selling jolly ranchers out of his backpack to my classmates and immediately i was like yo that's a lot of money. I could be doing that. So I went up to the kid and I asked him where does he get the candy? He told me that he buys it in bulk at a wholesale. Instantly, I remembered that my cousin that I grew up with, who was like a big sister to me, was married to a Chinese guy who owned a wholesale downtown. So I went home, told my mom about the business idea, and of course she was very supportive. My mom has always supported anything I wanted to do so long as it didn't get in the way of school. So she called my cousin who spoke to her husband who then basically was giving me the candy for the price that he was getting. Meaning I was getting my candy for a less than wholesale price. Do you get that? Let me let me break this shit down to you. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's say you go in a gas station, right? You look down by the register, what do you see? A big box of Snickers bars, a mm -hmm. dollar each. And let's mm -hmm. say the box holds 20 Snickers bars. Right. If you wanted to buy all 20 Snickers bars, 
you would have to pay $20. Well, if you were to go to a wholesale store, you could just buy the big box unopened for $10. So now you're paying 50 cents per Snickers box. And that's because the guy who owns the wholesale store is buying these boxes by the crate load directly from Snickers. So he's getting them for like five, 10 cents per Snickers bar. That's the price I was paying because the guy who owned the wholesale store was making babies with my cousin, who again is like a big sister to me. It's not what you know, it's who you know. After one day of selling candy, I made about my initial $20 investment plus profit. By the end of the week, I had two other dudes selling candy for me. I was making so much money that I stopped asking my mom for lunch money. Of course, she would still give it to me, but that just went right back into the business, of course. And I was never a tough guy back in school, but some about having other dudes who grew up in the hood report back to you at the end of the day with money in their hand, it just gives you a certain Pablo Escobar-esque type feeling, you know? Now the truth is, these niggas were stealing from me constantly. <laughs> they stole candy, they stole say, money, bro. but because the profit margins were so high, it was worth the loss. I was still making money hand over fist. Now, of course, a guy like Pablo Escobar would disagree with that based on principle. You know, he'd cut their legs off and throw them in a the river. But me, uh, mm, Christian boy, I go to church on Sundays and I, just wanted some new shoes, an Xbox, you know, some cool clothes. That's all I really wanted. So if that meant having to take a loss here and there, well, that, that was okay with me. Now, if you were paying attention during the beginning of the video, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to realize that this was probably against the rules, right? Actually, this was so against the rules that if you were caught selling candy to other students, you get suspended. Three suspensions well, and you're ex Actually, that's how it is, kind of. I was about to say, no, that's not how it is, but it is how it is. If you get caught doing it here at my school, you're getting suspended. They, if they don't see you, there's, the thing is, like, if they don't see you doing it, basically, you're all right. Because they haven't caught you. I'm completely, completely fine with that. Expelled, but I wasn't worried about getting expelled. What I was worried about was not graduating. You see, my senior year of high school in Jamaica was on record the most disobedient, disrespectful, unruly graduating class to have ever come out of Arden High School. At least, according to the dean of discipline, the music teacher, the principal, and everybody else who we were supposed to be listening to. As a result, we were warned that anybody who caught a suspension, even once, for any reason at all, was not going to be allowed to walk the stage during graduation. And I know Pablo Escobar got shot or whatever, but that actually sounds way better than having to tell your Jamaican mother that you can't participate in graduation. I mean, what death by firing squad sounds way more pleasant. Big, 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 big facts. You don't want to tell your black mom nothing even close. Y'all hear me? Nothing close to am I, I might not be able to walk the you out that door, bro. You out the door. And if you ask me, so one morning during morning devotion, I was you, you, and you already out the door, bro. You smacked into next week. Matter of fact, next month. I was chilling at my desk when one of my homies and classmates, Peter, looked over to me and gave me that look. It was that a hey, got any candy look? And of course, by now everybody knew. I was the plug. My gut told me that it was too early to start selling, you know? I mean, if for no other reason than the fact that it's the Lord's time. I mean, we're supposed to be praying to God right now. 
Here I am slinging illegal candy under his nose. So Peter comes over to my desk, hands me like, I don't know, 25 cents, which probably back then got you about mm, a few Jolly Ranchers, you know, just enough to hold you over to lunchtime. I discreetly pass Peter the candy, and as I'm pulling away my hand, I look up, and who do I see staring me in the soul? The Dean of Discipline. Instantly, my heart drops. I put my hands in my pocket and I look down at my desk and I'm just hoping that he did not realize what just occurred. But he was not a fool. All I hear is, Mr. Hines, <laughs> to the front of the- That's tough. You already know what happens when they say it like that. The classroom, please. Look, that, look, exactly. Exactly start walking to the front. Whoa, whoa, Mr. Hines, don't forget your bag. Bring that too. As I'm at- Ooh, no, but- Nah, Blasco. Nah, Blasco. Woo! The bomb Blasco. Dang, that's tough. That's a tough one right there. That's a tough one right there. You in trouble, boy. You in trouble, boy. Matter of fact, here, give it to me. I'll keep it safe. And we walk to his office. And we get to his office. The worst see. thing you want to hear when you're going up to the office. Ah, uh, give me your butt back, boy. I'll keep it safe. Right here. Puts me down. Opens the bag. Sees the candy. Mr. Hines, are you aware of the consequences? Nothing, look up! No! I thought he was about to do another look up. My bad, my bad. I thought he was going to be like... Boy. So being caught soliciting candy during school hours. Yeah. So then you know you will not be walking the stage with the graduating class. Yeah. And you have nothing to say for yourself. When I don't show up to school next week, ask my mother where my body is buried. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Hines, you know, I thought you were much smarter than this. I'm also aware <laughs> that you're an okay student. You don't really get in trouble. So here's what I'm willing to do, Mr. Hines. I will allow you to walk the stage with your classmates. What you <laughs> That saved that boy. That saved him right there. Because he already know. He, he, he already knew that he wasn't going to make it out alive after saying that sentence to his mom. At all. Or still suspect. Which you, you shouldn't. Well, well, I can't say that. But which, in most cases, you wouldn't. Ended. You must show up to school tomorrow wearing the black and white. And if you are caught soliciting candy again, I can guarantee you wearing the black and white. And if you are caught soliciting, you must show up to school tomorrow. Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, ooh, shame. In shame. Wearing the black and white. And if you are caught so I feel sorry for your boy. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Eliciting candy again. I can guarantee that you will not there's be graduating this look. year. You understand me? Yes, sir. Good. All right, now go back to your class. Oh, one more thing, Mr. Hines. Thank you for the candy. <laughs> you will not go to wait. Uh, at that moment and thus marks the end that moment I know some kids will be like you fat mother <laughs> it's all the song but it's all in the song of my legal candy selling career taught me a lot had a lot of fun made me some money I'm glad I got to graduate but you know what even if I didn't I'm glad I did what I did, because no risks, no reward, and sometimes the greatest reward is finding out that you have the balls to take the risk in the first place. Yeah, that kind of sounded good. We gotta go, facts. baby. We're wasting our facts, y'all. He always speaking in facts, as always, bro. He got some wise information for y'all, man.
It's in every video, but he always got a moral. That's why I watch him. He always has a moral. He always has inspirational stuff. Sometimes that's where I get it from. And I share it to y'all. And I share it to my people that I know. I share it to the people that I'm close with. People that needs uplifting. Man, I'm out, bro. Y'all heard it from me. Let's go.